In this presentation, I examine the impact of standardised testing in literacy and numeracy in the dominant language of English and discriminatory acts of exclusion from opportunities for equitable futures on Indigenous students living in remote communities. I will draw from a variety of sources, including the academic work of Humphrey and Freeman, to expand on the perspectives shared by Alice Ether in both her poem, Yuya Karabara, and her essay in Growing Up Aboriginal in Australia, edited by Anita Heiss. Furthermore, I will be drawing on source material gathered through my own experiences as a teacher in, an, in a remote Indigenous school, in an attempt to illustrate how very real the issue of exclusion and practices of deficit discourse are. These experiences are included in order to show how, when led and supported by progressive educators and community leaders, teachers can create rewarding educational experiences for students despite the dominant paradigm of neoliberalist achievement-based success criteria. Sitting in the middle of this collision, my mission is to bring two divided worlds to sit beside this fire and listen. Freeman, a prior principal of Yakala School, reports on the, and I quote, detrimental impact the focus on NAPLAN results has had on Indigenous students, end quote. NAPLAN is mandated, yet at year three, Indigenous students at Yakala have not yet begun to study English as a second language. This mandate creates a deficit discourse and negates the real learning that Indigenous students are undertaking in their bilingual, biliterate classroom. This learning includes the construction and conceptualization of ideas, wants and needs in two languages, two distinctly different counting systems, and the challenging negotiations of living in two worlds. Growing up between two worlds, it's still a lot to take in. The pace of change is so fast and we are just expected to keep up. You see it out here firsthand, in the schools, in the government services, the programmes being run. The community has already changed rapidly since it was established as a trading post in the 1950s. Nothing is ever going to stay the same, but it's about listening to each other and moving forward, not letting everything happen mindlessly, but being part of conscious change. For teachers in remote communities, there can be challenges that invite a need to examine or re-examine the value of teaching in prescribed pedagogical methodologies. Being open-minded to a variety of approaches to meet the needs of students while building strong community relationships becomes as valuable as navigating the departmental demands for accessible and quantifiable learning growth data. Courageous conversations about the ongoing impacts of racism would enable educators to purposefully interrogate their deficit constructions of Aboriginal students and their communities. Daniel Mays, 2020. We do not believe that inclusive education is enough to overcome the pernicious legacy of exclusion, deficit and disadvantage embedded in the Australian education system. When Aboriginal students do not experience their own culture in their education, then education functions to assimilate by de-Aboriginalising them. Rather than getting mired in the semantic debates around the meaning of inclusion, Let's look instead at a culturally responsive pedagogy. So what can be some of the solutions for teachers working in remote Indigenous schools who are attempting to negate the deficit bias of the current education system? Play trombone in band, school band. We go Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Canberra.
Learn new ways to engage and integrate while balancing the needs of students with curriculum outcomes. In conclusion, despite the evidence of the detrimental effects of systematic testing like NAPLAN and the negative discourses around the achievements of Indigenous students working, living and working in remote communities, there is also a movement to redress the balance and build cultural knowledge through culturally sensitive pedagogies that work in harmony with communities and elders to bring forward the ideals of a two-way and a two-world curriculum that benefits Indigenous Australian students and allows them to fully grow in their communities and to be part of an Australian multicultural society. Thank you for watching this presentation. It was made with a combination of students' work from my classes in Yakala and from excursions from Learning on Country and some of my own work from using Keynote. Thank you again. Thank you.